bbadrenaline.com fans, welcome back. It's uh, Darren Tipton, and I am excited to introduce a new segment um, for our followers. It's going to be called On Campus, and it's a segment that we are just going to do that. We're going to get on campus with some of the uh, top college programs in the country, talk with their coaches, and learn just a little bit more about what's going on on campus. And so today we are uh, very lucky to have Coach Booth from Creighton. And Coach, thank you for taking your time and being a trailblazer with me. I am excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah, well, I know um, you guys never have a lot of off days, but with everything hitting and season starting next week, it's crazy. So appreciate your time. But first of all, I want to ask you about, let's talk about your arena. Um, and I went to the tournament over Labor Day last week, and it was crazy. Every one of your matches was completely sold out. Talk about the arena and talk about the passion of your fan base. So, yeah, we built DJ Sokol Arena uh, in 2009, I think, um, and it was transformational for our program, as you can imagine. It's it's one of the few, I mean, think about great facilities around the country. There's very few that are built ground up for women. Um, a lot of times you have refurbished facilities or it's a shared facility, but our facility uh, seats 2,200 people and it's just for volleyball and women's basketball. And we always say, you know, we have TerraFlex and, and when volleyball is playing, it is a volleyball facility. And then when we put have it for basketball, it's a basketball facility, but everything's chair back seating for the most part. And so there's not a bad seat in the house. And, you know, you know, being from the Midwest, Nebraska, the state of Nebraska loves volleyball. And so we have a great fan base and it's, uh, you know, I still get chills after many, many years of coaching here um, before every game. I mean, it's, it's an awesome atmosphere. Well, and I said, you know, um, very new to the college game, especially a year ago at this time. And when I watched you at Kentucky and when it was sold out, it was a Saturday evening um, and the, the pep band was playing. I mean, it was loud in there. And I'm like, this is what college volleyball should be like, other than just the final four. Now, little did I know about a couple of weeks later, um, you'd have a few more people in town at one of your matches, but you do that regularly. And it just felt like a big time atmosphere. Um, and I'm guessing it's not like that just for tournaments. It's like that all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the reasons I've stayed at Creighton is because, you know, I'm not naive that you know, if I go to a P5 school, maybe we're the 12th priority on campus. And here we are a big fish and, you know, everything, our men's basketball is usually a top seven, eight draw in the country, right? They draw about 18,000 per game. The things that we're doing for men's basketball from, like you talked about, a band perspective, a cheer perspective, we've got an amazing, huge interactive video board that we can, you know, put things up. We're going to have an MC at our games this year so that we're interacting in the stands. We're going to be doing some creative things to really try to enhance that fan uh, experience. So, you know, I love that it's a priority here. And it's one of the, it's one of the big reasons I've stayed at Creighton because I, I love that we're a big deal. Let's talk about Nebraska and just in the state. Um, and we, we hosted the Midwest battle a couple of weeks ago and I kind of joked with team Nebraska. I'm like, Hey, if you don't, if you don't take home the state of Nebraska, I don't know if people let you back into the state, right? Like it's that big of a deal. Just talk about the passion statewide for volleyball um, and just the educated fan base. Yeah. I mean, I always give credit to this to Terry Pettit, who was the, you know, one of the original coaches. I, I think he was like the second coach, but basically built the state Nebraska university, of Nebraska volleyball, um, and what he did was he did it at the grassroots level. He went and got season ticket holders. He literally went door to door. He did tons of coaching clinics. And, you know, each time you have a coaching clinic, you're building future coaches, future players. He built his, uh, his program around Nebraska kids at the time. So what that means is we've got incredible coaches in the panhandle of Nebraska, you know, so they know how to, you know, switch and do some of this nuance of the game that the average person wouldn't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, you look at, you look at our high school, if you go to our high school state tournament, it is high level volleyball at, at smallest school division to the largest school. Um, our D2 programs, Wayne State and Kearney are always top 15 in the country. Um, our NAI programs are often in the final four. 
Um, I, I include Iowa Western, even though that's in Council Bluffs at the junior college level, they've won some national championships. And then obviously our division one programs with, with Nebraska, Creighton, UNO are all, um, you know, fighting for conference championships. Um, and then, you know, Creighton and Nebraska competing on the, on the national level. So it, it really is a volleyball state and it, it's exciting. Uh, I ask, ask around as I'm getting to know people and, and networking and whatnot. And I asked several people just about you in general and your program. And I continuously heard she does things right. Um, she runs a classy program. What does that mean to you? And what do you think they mean when they look from the outside in? Well, I appreciate that. That's really, really kind to hear. Um, I guess I hope, you know, my goal is that we're doing things the right way. And so a, you know, from a professional standpoint, we're not cheating on the NCAA rules. We're trying to follow the rules and do things the right way. And then I think the bigger issue is, you know, trying to uh, treat our athletes the way that as a parent, as a mom of three daughters, I would want them to be treated. And that that's with discipline and accountability, but it's with love and fairness and communication. So hopefully we're doing that, those things We're we're not perfect by any stretch, but we're trying to do the right thing. And, and uh, hopefully our players and our players, parents uh, can feel that. What's maybe different about your program now than like 10 years ago? Do you feel like you're a lot more established in more conversations or what would you say the biggest difference is now than a while back? Yeah. So I got here in 03 and we made our first NCAA tournament in 10, didn't make it in 11 and we've made it every year since. So, um, but that's been kind of the growth is, is the consistency of the NCAA tournament, which has been big. Um, and then we moved to the Big East in 2013. We we finished in the Missouri Valley in 2012. We won our one and only conference championship that year and then moved to the Big East. And the Big East was transformational um, really because of its basketball prowess, but it's got such national name recognition that we were able to get in more doors, I would say, because people know the Big East name. You know, they know Villanova, they know Georgetown, some of those schools that are perennial powers, especially in men's basketball. Um, so that got us in some doors. Um, and then, you know, uh, we've just been able to build consistency and hope again, you know, it's a life lesson of try to treat people right. I mean, I, players that never saw the court for us have helped us get recruits. So trying to make sure each kid feels valued. And nowadays with social media, a lot of our recruits will DM alums or current players without even my knowledge. So you've got to make sure hopefully every kid that comes to your program is going to say hopefully positive things about their experience. So let's talk a little bit. Uh, I love Omaha. Uh, be kind of a neat mix of a little bit of that city feel, right? But also a small campus feel. Talk about Creighton as a community. Yeah, I, I'm biased. I, I always say I'm totally Midwestern. Um, so I, I love Omaha too. For a lot of the things that you said, you know, Omaha proper is about 450,000 and then it's about a million metro. But what that means is, you know, from a big city standpoint, you know, every concert that's a big national tour comes to CHI, which is less than a mile from our campus. So you can sell those sort of things. But yet when you drive on the roads, it's not packed. Like when I go to Big East cities, we sit in traffic for hours sometimes. And, you know, you're not going to do that in Omaha. But I love Creighton. You know, our school, our size is going to be smaller than a lot of the schools that we compete against, which can be a negative or a positive for, you know, what a recruit wants. But we're different. And so we can sell those differences. I love it that you walk across campus. If you're a student, you're probably going to see someone that you know, but you're not going to know everybody. Um, you're going to be in small enough classes that faculty are going to know you and come to games. Um, so those are the things that I think are the Creighton difference. And some, you know, for our recruits, they really, that really resonates with them. And then others that want more of that big school, uh, you know, huge campus, you know, they, this might not be the right fit for them. So talk about on campus. Are there a couple of historic restaurants. I mean, you probably have to be politically correct, maybe call out a few, but but where do kids go? What do they do um, on campus, you know, when they're not in your gym playing volleyball? Well, on campus, you know, we have the, the cafeterias and we're actually getting a, a firehouse subs and a Qdoba over the summer um, in, in Starbucks, those sort of places on campus. But I think the really cool thing about what's really close to campus, you've probably been down to the old market. I mean, a mile from campus, we have a really cool area that's got shops and tons of restaurants and it's, uh, you know, cobblestone and, you know, it's just a cool area. And that's a little long walk, but it would be walkable. 
Um, and then we've got three other pods that are all within a mile or two, um, you know, Midtown Crossing, Blackstone, which is a whole refurbished area, Dundee. And so I think that, you know, per capita, Omaha supposedly, I mean, this is, who knows if I'm saying correct information on this one, but supposedly we have more restaurants per capita than any big city in the country. So we have great food for kids that love, that are the foodies that come in. Um, whether that be the chain restaurants, but we've got a lot of local joints that uh, people enjoy. Yeah, and I will second that. You do have uh, great food in Omaha. And then, you know, and the other thing too, uh, it's usually after, I guess, the, the school year, but uh, the College World Series, you know, you talk about, about events, just hosted the, the NCAA Final Four. I mean, there's a lot going on at that CHI Center. I mean, we don't have professional sports in, although we're getting a pro volleyball team next year, yeah. but up until, you know, we don't have professional sports. So everything is about college athletics here. And so that means like, I mean, you alluded to final four for volleyball. We've held, hosted the U S swim trials several times and they want to keep coming back to Omaha because we sell it out. You know, we've held the world championships for e uh, equestrian. Um, and then the college world series. If you haven't done that, even if you're not a baseball fan, have you done that Darren? Yeah, uh, my, my folks, actually, my last dad's, my dad's last job was at Creighton University Hospital. So we went okay. to old Rosenblatt um, yes. three times. And you're right. It is amazing. Yeah, it's such a great experience. That's good. Well, coach, we're going to let you go and get uh, on to your other things. We thank you for your time. Um, I hope you all don't move for because me, it's an easy drive. I don't get a lot of those where I live. So it's an easy drive to watch great volleyball. But uh, we appreciate you and no better compliment than what other coaches are saying about you. And, and uh, it was cool to finally get to talk to you. Well, thank you for having me. And thanks for what you're doing to grow the sport. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll keep working away. So take care, coach.